Welcome back to another episode of Creepy and Haunted Places. In this episode, we explore five locations, some of them known, some of them not known unless you're a local, and some of them you couldn't pay me to spend the night in, not even for a million dollars. As a human being, I own up to my mistakes. In the last episode, I said that Lep Castle was the location where a little girl's spirit had been reported where she had fallen down the stairs and passed away. I was in the right county, however it was the wrong castle. In this episode, I feature Charleville Castle, still in County Offaly, Ireland, but the place where the little girl's spirit has been said to wander and help those who need it. Situated in the Midlands of Ireland, Charleville Castle was once the haunting ground of Ireland's Druids. What started out as plans on paper in 1798 grew to something much more by the end of that year. It was designed by a leading architect, Francis Johnston, and was said to be one of the finest examples of Gothic revivalism. Its tin soldier fortress look is said to be a celebration of the victory of the Third French Revolutionary Expedition to Ireland. It took 14 years to complete and remains a monument to forgotten power and the people who made it possible. Because of the lack of resources, the mansion changed hands several times, and with each new owner came new refurbishments. The castle remained uninhabited from 1912, and in 1968, the roof was removed. Michael McMullen commenced restoration work in 1971 and was later taken over by Constant Sequist and Bridget Vance. Later, a trust was formed to help with the costs. The castle has been featured on many shows, including Scariest Places on Earth and Ghost Hunters International, and was used as a filming location for Becoming Jane and Northanger Abbey in 2007. The most famous ghost in resident is that of a young girl named Harriet, who died in April of 1861. She had been sliding down the banister of the Grand Staircase when she lost her balance and fell to her death on the stone floor below. She is often seen with a little boy, who is suspected to be her playmate, but his identity remains a mystery. People have reported singing in the middle of the night, laughing, and even screams. Others said they have captured her on film, and even seen her standing in a blue and white dress with golden curls and ribbons in her hair. This was confirmed by Bridget Vance's three-year-old boy, who disappeared one day while they were doing renovations. They searched all over the castle for him, afraid that he had befallen the same fate as Harriet, but he was finally found at the bottom of the staircase, where he told them that a boy and a girl had looked after him as he came down the stairs. Now this next location isn't exactly creepy, but it is weird, made even more so by what the owner had to say about its intended creation. Adjacent to Alnwick Castle in Northumberland, the Poison Gardens were added to the castle in February of 2005 on 14 acres. It sits behind black gates, marked with crossbones, and contains over 100 legendary killers, including Nox Vomica, Hemlock, Ricinus Communis, Foxglove, Atropa Belladonna, Brugmansia, and Laburnum. The mission of the garden also includes drug education, featuring plants of cannabis, coca, magic mushrooms, tobacco, and the opium poppy. The Duchess was reported as saying, I wonder why so many gardens around the world focus on the healing power of plants rather than their ability to kill. I felt like that most children I knew would be more interested in hearing how a plant killed, how long it would take you to die if you ate it, and how gruesome and painful the death might be. Tour guides explain their properties while keeping a close eye on the patrons, warning people, do not touch and do not smell any of the plants. There are plants here that can kill you. Because of the danger that many of these plants pose to humans and animals, some of them have been caged, and the garden remains under 24-hour security watch. Ticket prices are $28.22 for families, $4.18 for children 5 to 16, and 11.50 for adults. Sometimes paranormal activity doesn't revolve around wars or major events. 
Oftentimes, it takes only a small event during a person's life to trigger a haunting after their death. On April 14, 1755, Martha Keese sent her two oldest daughters to collect sand from Wachisset Pond for cleaning their house. They were followed by their four-year-old little sister, Lucy. Once they realized Lucy had followed them, they sent her back home. But Lucy was never seen by her family again. Martha was distraught over not being able to find her, and she never gave up looking. Some say that she was driven to near insanity by the time she died because they never found out what happened to her. Some say that Native Americans had found her in the woods and taken her away, while others claim that the Key's neighbor, Tilly Littlejohn, was responsible for her death, murdering her over a feud over the property line. However, Tilly at the time was not old enough to own property. Martha died in 1789 and was buried in the old Meeting House Cemetery on Mountain Road. People claim to have seen her spirit wandering around the mountain, still looking for Lucy, or even weeping at her gravesite. Others have stated that they've seen a young girl in the woods and a child's footprint in the snow. The ghost stories even inspired a lifetime movie called The Legend of Lucy Keys that premiered in 2005. Today, the cemetery is no longer active, but it remains well kept and one can visit Lucy's Cradle at the Princeton Historical Society. Mission La Parisima Concepcion de Maria Santissima, or Mission of the Immaculate Conception of Most Holy Mary, was founded by Father Presidente Fermin de La Sion in 1787. It was the 11th out of 21 Franciscan missions established in Alta, California. The original complex was destroyed by an earthquake in 1812 and rebuilt in the Northwest. After Mexico won the Mexican War of Independence in 1823, Spanish funding ceased to the Santa Barbara Presidio, leading to aggression among the soldiers, who turned their anger towards the local Indians and led to a revolt in 1824. The Indians took over the mission until more soldiers arrived, but lost their hold when many decided to leave. They tried to seek sanctuary in the nearby mountains, but they eventually returned. After Mexico's disestablishment of the missions in California from 1834 to 1843, the buildings of La Purisima were abandoned and the lands were granted to another mission. In the 20th century, the Civilian Conservation Corps pledged to restore the mission, and with help from the Catholic Church and the Union Oil Company, it was made a reality. The mission was featured on Ghost Adventures, The Other Siders, Scariest Places on Earth, and the Missions of California. The mission is reportedly haunted by the Indians and Spaniards who died there. Cold spots have been felt by tourists and volunteers, as well as the feeling of being watched even when no one is around. Bill Henry, a tour guide at the mission, stated that once when he was wearing a soldier's uniform, he felt something push him from behind, but he had been alone at the time. On another occasion, Henry had brought along his young granddaughter. In the morning air, they could hear what sounded like death chants, and it scared his granddaughter so much, she will still not return to the mission. Spirits have reportedly messed up clean rooms, and sometimes the tour guides have said to see an imprint of someone having slept in the beds. And on another visit, Bill claims to have seen three young girls perched on the window seat inside the barracks. In November 2015, I was taking a speech class at a local community college. We were asked to give a persuasive speech about a topic, and I chose paranormal activity. I featured EVPs, and one of the locations that I featured was the Velisca Axe Murder House. Not only because it was also featured on Scariest Places on Earth, as we all know, my favorite TV series, it was also featured on Ghost Adventures. In that episode, they received an amazing amount of evidence, leading to this being number one on our countdown as the epitome of creepy and haunted.
On Thursday, June 13, 1912, six members of the Moore family, the father Josiah, the mother Sarah, their four children, Herman, age 11, Catherine, age 10, Boyd, age 7, and Paul, age 5, as well as two neighbor girls, Lena Stillinger, age 12, and Ina Stillinger, age 8, had returned from a Children's Day program at a Presbyterian church. The program ended at 9.30 p.m., and they walked back to the Moore house, arriving around 10 p.m. Unbeknownst to the family, an unknown person had broken into their house and hidden in the attic, waiting for the family to return. The family and girl settled down to sleep, and the killer made his move. He covered all the mirrors in the house with blankets, and then proceeded in his grisly attack. He made his way into the master bedroom just outside the attic, and with an axe, killed Josiah and Sarah. Josiah had been struck so many times that his eyes were missing. He then went into the children's rooms and killed Herman, Catherine, Boyd, and Paul. For an unknown reason, the killer had ventured back into the master bedroom, striking the body some more before he went downstairs into the guest bedroom and killed Ina and Lena. Investigators believe that all the victims, except for Lena, had been asleep when the murders occurred, and that Lena had tried to fight back. She was found lying crosswise on the bed with a defensive wound on her arm. It is also believed that she had been sexually assaulted because of the nature that her body had been found. A neighbor became concerned when she saw that none of the family had been around the next morning. When she went to check the scene and got no response, she called Josiah Moore's brother, who used his key to open the door. He found the bodies of Lena and Ina and left to call the police. Many suspects, including Reverend George Kelly and a vagrant by the name of Andrew Sawyer, who had acted in a strange manner about the murders and even slept with an axe next to him and would often speak about the murders, had been rounded up, but in the end, no one had been charged with the crime. Sawyer had even been overheard to talk to himself, yelling, I will cut your goddamn head off, and made striking motions with an axe. This case remains open but cold to this day. On an episode of Ghost Adventures, a retired sheriff was brought in to witness an EBP session. What was recorded was the killer's voice saying, I killed six kids? A voice to which the sheriff says he did not hear when they were recording. Also recorded were the voices of Lena Stillinger, Josiah, and one of the male children. When they had gone outside to review the audio, the door that led to an upstairs bedroom slammed shut, following the sound of footsteps on the hardwood floor. Even before the night investigation, a closet door in the upstairs bedroom had opened. It is said that the ghosts of the family aren't the only ones in attendance. Many psychics and researchers have felt the presence of the killer still residing within, and even the presence of a demonic entity, who, when asked to identify itself, gave the name of Legion. That same night, when the asking investigator tried to leave the premises, he was attacked by an unknown entity and was later found to have three scratch marks on his back that resembled the letter L. That's all the time we have left for this episode of Creepy and Haunted Places. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. And the next time you get the urge to set foot in a creepy or haunted place, don't forget to bring a candle.